Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Andrea and today I would like to talk to you about one of my favorite nature writers ever. I just discovered her in the past week and I've read two of her books. In my video that I made a while back called My Favorite Nature Writing, I have to admit that these two books have made me rethink that list and if I were to redo it she would go at the very top because she is that amazing. So the author I'm talking about is Robin Wall Kimmerer. Now she is one of the most wonderful writers and um, she wrote a book called Braiding Sweetgrass which you can see here and Gathering Moss, A Natural and Cultural History of Mosses. Now the cover is a bit shiny for this one so you can't really see it properly but it's you know, moss. And this one was the winner of the John Burroughs Medal Award for Natural History Writing. Robin Wall Kimmerer is, she is an indigenous woman. She's a member of the Citizen Potawatomi Nation, but she is also a professor who teaches ecology and has studied science and environmental science in a very sort of Western scientific way. And when she writes, like in Braiding Sweetgrass, she blends together these two worlds where she will take an aspect of nature and she'll discuss it in the sort of, you know, this is the scientific term and this is what we know about it from a very scientific perspective. But then she'll take a step back and say, but this is what it means to me and this is how I came to remember this or this is the myth associated with this from my people, this is the legend, this is what it meant to my tribe or to my ancestors. She will weave this in with, um, you know, the residential schools and how certain words were taken away and certain traditions and certain things and she will blend all of those together while telling you about nature. It is the most extraordinary storytelling technique and above all, I have to admit that both of her books I not only have, but I also got the audiobooks on Audible and she herself reads them. So following in the text with her reading her own work, her voice and the way she talks honestly feels like you're getting a really warm hug from someone the whole time. She speaks in such a kind way and you just understand that she has so much love and passion for these things. And on top of her blending this uh, spiritual component with the scientific and saying, you know, there isn't that much of a difference between the two if we allow these two worlds to merge. She's also a mother. She also has all these life experiences and they all kind of seep through in the way she writes. So for example, one chapter is on strawberries. And she'll tell us, you know, the earth gives you a gift, like the hidden strawberries within the leaves. And it opens up and then there you find the gem and are the strawberries ready? She talks about the three sisters, you know, you have corn, beans and squash. And the way she talks about them is like, you know, they are three sisters and she'll tell you the story and the legend and then she'll say, you know, corn comes first, it's sturdy, it's strong. Just like an older sister takes responsibility and the squash is a late bloomer and comes out last but it's also the sweetest and tiniest and the way she talks about them honestly like I can't even, it was like reading the the Peveril Brothers story from the Deathly Hallows but applying it to elements or to agriculture to see this on so well on paper like I was reading a whole chapter on beans and I was just so interested and that takes so much skill. Another chapter that kind of stood out to me was the, the term animacy. So the idea that one day you could go into the forest and there might be nothing in a certain spot and then the next day you come and there are mushrooms there and they have grown and they are peeking through from beneath the ground to above the ground and this kind of movement that's constantly happening in the forest or in nature where you have moving rivers, moving mushrooms, the rustling of the wind through the leaves and all of the noises and animation or animacy that happens it's just this reminder that everything is pure and alive and there's always constant movement. So I really enjoy that. And then there are many moments where she'll tell you about some of her experiences with her daughters or some of the field trips that she took with her class 
and what each student would say and it was just so interesting and fun and peaceful and it just felt like you were hanging out with someone who was just taking care of you and teaching you and at the same time caring about you and all nature. I just, I loved it so much. I, I don't know if I emphasized that enough. So then immediately after I had to go and find this one, which is about Moss. Now this one is actually her first book and it was slightly different from this one. Now this to me was a perfect like five star read, six, seven, eight, a hundred. Loved it. This one feels more like a thesis. There's something about it that's just so focused just on mosses and it is interesting. It's just there's a lot to remember because she'll take each kind of moss in turn and she will talk about it and there are illustrations but small ones where you have kind of types of mosses and then she'll tell you about them. She'll describe them to you in Latin and then she'll tell you a little bit about their environment, um, how they reproduce. There's a lot on reproduction in terms of mosses and it's very similar and again she'll draw some parallels between us and mosses or she forces you to think about moss was there when the earth started and how it took the weight of the water and how it could adapt and survive in certain environments but this one was just way way more focused and again just to go back to this one another element about this book of what I, something i really really appreciate about it was that in every chapter she would also kind of sprinkle fun facts but then she'd also sprinkle fun thoughts like oh you know i always thought this would be kind of fun and um it's it just feels like a camaraderie you feel connected to the author and you feel like you're just hanging out so for example she spends an entire chapter discussing nana bojo who is um, a figure, a great figure in um, indigenous culture. And as she discusses sort of his lessons to us about nature, she likes to imagine him hanging out with Carl Linnaeus and them walking a path together and naming things and what naming things means to them and how they came up with all these terms and branches and uh, the way they named and appreciated nature because naming nature is a part of being human and just these thoughts where it's like okay that wasn't you know scientific but it was just a fun thought and I like to picture them two walking side by side in the forest and to have moments like that is just worth every moment of reading and then the other one is just like fun fact you know like lichen is both a fungi and an algae who knew? I would strongly recommend both of these. If you had to choose one, I would say definitely go read Braiding Sweetgrass. Um, the full title is Braiding Sweetgrass, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge, and the Teachings of Plants. I will leave a link down below to Goodreads where you can add this to your list if it interests you. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!